Yeah. Hello, everyone. I think uh, we can start. Everybody can hear me well. Great. So um, my name is Judith Faut. I'm um, a postdoc researcher at the Technical University in Vienna and also at RB um, Software um, on the uh, topic of digital building permits. And this is why we are all here. So in this session, in the next uh, one and a half hour, we will hear about some insights and we have a discussion on the uh, focus on software architectures and platform um, orchestrating the digital building permits, data workflows and components. And uh, therefore we have um, three presentations um, from ongoing uh, research projects. Two are from the Horizon Europe Fund and the other one is uh, funded by uh, the German uh, government or Ministry of um, e um, Economy and uh, Climate uh, Affairs. So, uh, and then after that, we have um, a 30 minutes panel session where you are all invited and welcome to ask uh, questions. So, um, the first presenter is Katja Breitenfelder from Fraunhofer uh, IBP. Um, she is um, yeah, a member or participant of the Accord EU project. Um, after her, we will uh, hear uh, something about the Czech. A project also funded um, by Horizon Europe. Um, Arne Schilling from Virtual City System will present um, this project. And after that, uh, Christoph Trinadel from Software AG and Hannes Heitzhausen from RB uh, uh, Software will present the IECO um, project uh, related to Gaia X. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, Katja, the stage is yours. <laughs> Please. <Okay. laughs> Thank you very much. So um, I'm very glad. Thank you to the organizers for being invited to this um, uh, conference and meeting. Uh, I'm feeling honored. Uh, I'm presenting today um, the project Accord, automated compliance checks for construction, renovation or demolition works. And I will focus after a short overview of the project on current results that are actually uh, dealing with the development of any kind of system architecture or <laughs> uh, supporting build, uh, digital building permitting or automatic building permitting that will discussion point be discussion point later on. So sh shortly about myself, I'm engineer architect um, as a background. Uh, we are involved in this project with two institutes, Holzkirchen and Stuttgart, um, the Fraunhofer Institute for Building Physics and I am uh, leading the work package solution development, but also the German demonstrator um, dealing with three different use cases besides one task, which I today will also focus on, which is on a court framework and user requirement. So this project was already presented during um, a small number of international uh, conferences and um, so I will start again but only very shortly it's about it's one of the three sister projects dealing with the digital twin transition with green and digital so you find here some of the main points on the slides of the EU framework which our project is actually covering and answering some most important questions. Mainly we are today talking about building permitting and building permit processes. So how to come from manual to digital to automatic. And um, yeah, what about the different EU countries? Um, what is the level of maturity and how we could align and commonly solve current issues and come to uh, solutions for the most important questions. Um, here you see again on the slide a short definition of what could be manual, digital and automatic building permitting processes. And actually the goal is to, to come to an integration. Today's point is also about interoperability and data exchange. So, uh, we are using open standards and um, main goal is also to deal with machine readable and interpretable regulations and not doing um, all of the um, work manually anymore. In beyond the state of the art, so uh, overall goal is to find novel ways to digitalize permitting and compliance works and the main <clears throat> four, let's say, fields of uh, 
yeah, research of state of the art of state of knowledge and technical uh, uh, state of the art you find here in this bubbles um, of course it's about automated code checking and it's all also about built environment semantic modeling beam based building permitting digitalization of construction regulation requirements and guidance as a main goal and you can imagine that the different EU countries have a different starting point so having a look on the time i would just uh, prefer going on now i guess we will start for you now with the most important slide the audience here could um could see i guess all of the slides i'm very sorry so well here's a very good overview i guess of um, what is going to be achieved what we are dealing with so <clears throat> um, it's all about um re resource efficiency and transparency not only interoperability in building permitting processes right so of course we have different uh, in the different uh, European countries, namely we have four demo countries, uh, we have applicants of any kind um, and um, we then uh, deal with the different, uh, hopefully BIM models already, of from concept to design, design to building and infra uh, structure design, construction, renovation, demolition works, and in the center of the whole thing, let's say, um, there should be um, orchestration of microservices in the future um, supporting the individual let's say national needs of the selected demo countries and member states and um, giving answer to what is developed the so-called accord or semantic framework and as you can see microservices will then depend on the individual use cases that the demo countries are dealing with being it from accessibility questions to energy co2 <clears throat> or green building certification safety or pr uh, preventive maintenance so on the one hand the applicants of the building permit uh, um, have of course their input into this uh, let's call it a system and the autom automation process. On the other hand, uh, the most important actors are, of course, the authorities or construction supervisions, um, the ones that um, are, let's say, uh, doing the um, approval or also the checking work. Currently, it's still the case. And we have here, we are dealing with different types of permit or approval, being it concept approval, building approval, construction approvals, or others. So here are the expected results. Um, we uh, are going to develop uh, integrated microservice um, uh, framework for autonomous compliance checks. And we will find solutions, develop solutions to formalize permit and compliance uh, processes further by uh, developing new tools and involving the uh, most important stakeholders. And we develop a semantic framework, which is actually the basis, as you can see, for the overall uh, developments. The validation, but also the requirements capture is then made in four demo countries um, with four different um, demonstrations and as you can see on the slide the use cases are dealing with um, similar um, but not equal um, questions from environmental compliance to building permitting itself the overall process or for example structural integrity of steel houses like this is the case, the case in the UK so um, <clears throat> finally of course the results should also um, support European developments. It's an innovation action, uh, different to um, following projects. Um, we are starting at a, as a, um, at a higher tech uh, technology readiness level. We are involving companies that are already, um, mm -hmm. let's say, um, providing different solutions to uh, relevant questions. Uh, being it, for example, cloud permit or Solipri for the Finnish case, but also others. And this, it is framed by the work of eight, eight research organizations and also uh, seven additional associations, which are listed underneath. I will now uh, shorten a little. I'm just running through the most important points. So 
I would like to present what we've reached so far to come later on to the discussion, right? So therefore actually it's only meant this work package overview. So we are currently in the closing stage of work package one, which was the landscape review. Uh, so an overview of the different uh, demo countries and also the accord framework and requirements definition. And this I will now tackle further. Of course, this work is methods are interlinked between the different work packages. And when I now say we, are, we, de we dealt with work package one and <clears throat> most important the accord framework and user requirements, then you can here, for example, see that we are equally already dealing with technical requirements and that the requirements themselves um, are developed in the different uh, demo use cases, which are mainly tackled in work package five. So just shortly, uh, I guess after a um, um, final check or approval, uh, we could also uh, deliver the, the slides later on. So I will only shortly mention the state industry survey we uh, developed across European countries um, that focused on the possible adoption and benefits of digital building permitting and automated compliance checking to let's say um, approve our thesis and um, that um, the urgent need of what is to be to, uh, of what is being developed within our project of course there were huge involvement not too bad and you can recheck possibly the results later on i will come to this conclusions already so of course uh, also, there are, let's say, different key obstacles in different countries So, and different requirements for digital permitting. Uh, in the different countries, some main aspects evolve. So the standardized submission process should be developed. And the ability to link BIM and GIS is one important topic or an intuitive user-friendly user interface. And what we also would like to reach is later on uh, training and support measures and outputs, and of course, open access to high level result data and simple and clear processes are upon the main points. So, and urgent need for the next 10 years. Um, here again, the stakeholder needs, the two most important we already discussed, the permit applicant and also the building control authorities of construction supervisions, but there's coming others into play. It's the legislators and the software providers. And yeah, our um, survey were also tackling the needs of um, those different stakeholders, or let's call it already high level requirement. And here, most importantly, uh, this is actually what we would like also to solve is <clears throat> to come to common guidelines to implement I see requirements to harmonize requirements using information deliverable specification and to create scalable compliance checking services, which is here actually uh, listed under software providers requirements. So now I can run through the images, let's say. Um, the steps I would like to describe um, to our next results, the code framework and user requirements we collected. Um, uh, which is the basis for our further solution development. So actually we started with the landscape analysis, um, the four demo countries, including not only Finland, but also Estonia, we are talking actually about five. So uh, they analyzed as built building perm uh, permit processes in their individual countries. And actually this is now starting for, point for the to be processes to be uh, developed, being it for the overall permitting process or the individual use cases as, showed, as shown previously. Um, <clears throat> so we, in, during the last months, we worked a lot in the demo countries uh, in our work package for the um, use cases. Um, and this is actually now framed of what is uh, what was developed. So you find here the starting point again to be process models, the analysis of the use cases, and then uh, we finally end with the code framework and user requirements. And the outlook is then the technical requirements and cloud architectural, architectural model, which in our case is still 
unknown ways. So this is going to be developed. So <clears throat> you can see some most important points. We developed scenarios to, for user requirements capture and also the form formal uh, UML modeling. It's already mentioned here. I would like to um, um, show this, um, taking the example of the German demo in, in parts. Uh, how, what are we dealing with? So in the case of the German demo, we are dealing with three use cases. And uh, for all of these use cases, um, Berlin TXL, the former airport um, of Tegel, um, is, uh, let's say, playing the ownership part, but also providing data and models and the use case, the, um, the realistic scenarios for the use cases. So we have three uh, use case scenarios, land use permitting, environmental compliance, and building permitting for industrialized timber construction systems. And what individual partners are doing is also um, specific from country to country. In our case, as you can see, uh, Fraunhofer is involved, the Tegel Project GmbH is involved, but also the Coordination Office for Semantic Standardization and Planning and Building Hamburg. We will uh, follow a presentation of Kai Uwe Krause later on in the session. I would gladly, would gladly invite you to that. Um, but we have also industry partners. And this is also specific uh, or standardization bodies that are uh, supporting individual demo cases. In our case, it's um, onto text and open geospatial consortium. Uh, in other cases, uh, it might be that there are solutions provided by Future Inside okay. or other countries uh, or other uh, enterprises. So I was asked to hurry up. Um, the, you can run through the slides later on. Um, we could also find an overview of the different demo use cases. And I will end with, let's say, two slides, the most important ones. So this is the methodology for the requirement uh, engineering. We, we captured user requirements, um, system requirements, and redeveloped the so-called Accord framework, which is later on feeding our solution development. And now I scroll further if I can do this. We had already the outlook of a first developed accord framework. So a very high level, we don't call it a core architecture, but let's say um, dealing with the interconnection of different, of the reuse of existing solutions and what is going to be developed anew. And here you can imagine that each country is um, uh, pulling a layer upon this framework we redeveloped again. So I would like to come as a final slide, if I can do this, let me just check to the new revised version of this and explain it further. Here. So we can take this as a discussion point for later panel discussion. There might be other projects that already came to solutions uh, being developed. You find here, uh, let's say an overview named with uh, numbers one, two, three, four, four and five, actually. Um, I'll just take a look if it's correct. <laughs> I've rechecked. Um, you can uh, find here the most important, call it components. So what is uh, what we are developing anew um, to be used by different demo countries are, uh, is um, um, a court rule formalization tool that's uh, we called it actually and um, so it's also interconnected with data dictionaries um, it's feeded by domain specific rule language and also based on a building compliance ontology developed within this project then <clears throat> we come to machine readable rules uh, having examples from different demo countries and those formalized building codes and rules are then, let's say, um, feeded into the uh, cloud-based permitting service. And this is dealing with, uh, with the requirement validation uh, of BIM models or other data that feed the system with process execution, with data storage, of course, and the orchestration of microservices. All of this is linked, finally, to um, yeah, API de development 
of existing solutions of uh, compliance checking services, but also API solutions and newly developed compliance checking microservices also, uh, also developed upon the different use cases. And yeah, actually, slides are going to be provided. I would like to close with this uh, short overview um, because next uh, upcoming projects uh, may be uh, further in the in the development process already, and it's uh, it can be taken as a discussion point. Thank you. I am um, I'm going to talk about an ongoing research project called Check. It's actually coordinated by um, Francesca Nuardo, which is sitting right here. I hope I'm not saying anything wrong. And Chantin Stota from Technical University of Delft. Um, <clears throat> My name is Arne Schilling, I'm from Virtual City Systems in Berlin, and we are one of the software companies uh, and in fact specialized in smart city developments and uh, digital urban twins is also a hot topic. Yep, Czech is also a Horizon Europe project, which is about adopting a fully digital building permit. And yeah, I think it's very similar to the Accord project. And I uh, also heard something about um, rules that need to be available in machine readable format. That's, uh, I will explain the same thing. <clears throat> so, building permits uh, need to be issued for every construction project in Europe. Um, this can be a small residential house or um, or office building or complex office building, like, like in this example, um, which is a lot, which is a little bit more interesting for us because we have much more data to work with, including a 3D city model or 3D model. But one of the main issues is the bureaucratic nature of the process, which can be ineffective. Also, the process is not harmonized within Europe, mainly because of different rules and procedures. The process now of attaining a building permit is, is characterized by, let's say, a lot of paperwork. It's not very digital at the moment. What we can also observe is that in the case of digital submission, exchanging information is becoming complicated uh, because there are so many software systems and this is why we need standard, standardization of data models as well. So by introducing a digital process, we hope to facilitate the exchange of data, uh, necessary checks, and the communication. The official objectives of the project are, among others, increase in speed of the process, higher transparency and scalability, also more precise and more objective results, and as a side effect, reduction of paper and other resources. And finally, the data generated will be more structured and reusable. Uh, we just need to look at the topic from the perspective of the whole building life cycle management, uh, which is fully digital in the future, at least I hope so. The structure of the project is, I would say, typical for a Europe Horizon project. Uh, we have a total of 5 million euros over, over three years. And we started in October last year. That means that we don't have anything yet that can be evaluated. We are still in the first phase of the project. Consortium involves 19 partners from 11 countries. We have universities and research institutes which are doing the theoretical groundwork. Uh, in this case, it's not just some academic work, um, but their findings are really the starting point of the entire information workflow in the project. Uh, then we have several private companies from architecture, design, uh, engineering and construction, as well as GIS. Um, then we have four municipalities, which are providing us with use cases, and uh, we are also implementing demos for each of them. Then we also have two standardization bodies, OGC and Building Smart International. You know them already. Uh, of course, they play an important role in the project as well. So the 
workflow of activities in the project is displayed in this diagram. Um, we start with the requirements. So the requirements of everything involved in the building permit process is currently collected and summarized as a glossary and also with the help of the communities. And they provided us with a wish list of things that they need and need to be supported and also the requirements uh, need to cover the local regulations and laws that architects need to take into account when planning a new construction. And, and um, also these uh, requirements need to translate it into something that is can be processed by another piece of software. Because that's what we want to achieve is an automatic workflow, including the actual checking software. So we need a machine readable format describing the actual regulations. Then we have two different branches. Um, one for BIM, soft, BIM software and the other one for GIS software, which are trying to encode now the information from the requirements into uh, exchange formats. So currently we are looking at two different formats. Uh, in the BIM world, this is IFC for storing 3D architectural models, and in the BIM world, it's uh, CTGML for storing entire 3D city models. And both formats have a kind of extension mechanism that, that we can use, for example, uh, we always need the exact geolocation of a plant building, and this can be stored as an IFC extension. And for CityJML, on the other side, there's a concept called application domain extension, which is a really powerful tool, and it allows us to add new feature types that we need, but that are currently not part of the CityJML standard. So the standardization activities are involved quite early in the project and uh, covered by OGC and uh, Building Smart. And they take care of everything related to these standards that I just mentioned, CDGML, IFC. Uh, but it's also about exchanging information between municipalities and the project. Uh, for example, we need urban development maps, uh, zoning maps, parcels, and so on as a basic information. Then we have a set of software tools uh, that need to run through a list of checks that need to be performed automatically. So uh, whenever a new submission for a building permit comes in, the authorities could start an automatic process of checks, which depend on the data that has been provided. So first of all, we need to do some compliance checking, have all the documents and information been submitted and is everything in the right format. Uh, for example, for 3D models, we rely on IFC, otherwise we can't do anything. Then we can do many checks based on the geometries, either within the construction model or based on the location and the surroundings. Uh, for example, rooms must have a minimum ceiling height or windows need to cover a minimum uh, percentage of the facade area. And usually there's also plenty of rules uh, described in the zoning map, such as maximum number of floors, um, maximum, maximum building height, roofs and shapes, the usage, of course, whether it's an office building or residential building, uh, just as an example. Then additionally, we can also take the, uh, the urban model into account and find out for example, if a planned solar array on the roof is really sufficient or maybe not because of the shadows that are cast from other buildings or trees. But uh, yeah, I need to say only a few checks have been implemented so far because uh, we are still in the early design phase. Um, but it will be interesting to see to what degree this can be automatic or uh, how much manual work is still necessary. So there's also a need for process management, for um, access control, which is covered by an uh, open API. 
uh, which is kind of connecting different software modules and stakeholders. So at the end, result will be a digital building permit process or a BVP toolkit as a yeah, system of systems, um, which can be eventually installed by municipalities or it can be provided as a cloud service. Uh, well, um, we also have education and training that is carried out in parallel to the technical developments and that will be starting near the end of the project. So one of the first things that we did in the project was to collect all the spatial information from the participating municipalities, which includes Via de Gaia in Portugal, Lisbon, uh, Prague and Ascoli Piceno in Italy. And for each municipality, we set up a basic urban digital twin as online application, which is basically a 3D city model with additional information on parcels, um, urban development maps, zoning maps. And this information will show us what actual regulations are really applied on a specific location. And we, we also need the surrounding buildings for doing distance checks and uh, maybe other more complicated urban simulations. So what the end user can expect at the end is that we can embed the building construction design in the CD city model and also that we can show uh, potential conflicts in this application. Now on the building level, we plan to use desktop applications, uh, or for example, Autodesk or Revit. Um, so any software is fine as, as long as it can output IFC as a standard exchange format, for example, for 2D footprints or um, for the complete 3D model of the entire structure of, of the entire structure. There can be a model that includes all the interior and exterior features, uh, like even parking lots, for example. And if you have this information, you can do many checks in an automatic fashion already. For example, in SIPE Urban, a uh, software that we are going to use, you can configure and, and run a set of checks. Um, this is already working. We just need to integrate this piece of software in a bigger uh, building permit toolkit. So in case the requirement is met, uh, you get a check mark. Uh, otherwise, if it's not met, you get a warning and maybe additional report of what went wrong. Um, now, in order to connect the various software tools and modules that are going to be developed in the project, uh, we use an online tool called BIM Server Center. And uh, BIM Server Center itself is an outcome of another e EU Horizon project as uh, in the industrial leadership program. It's kind of a collaboration platform that for, for engineers and architects uh, where you can upload 3D models and uh, make them available for other software packages like for example, CAD, desktop programs. And currently, this piece of software or this platform has a wide user base in Spain, but uh, we also want to use it as a backbone for storing and, and managing 3D designs that are part of the building permit process. Of course, uh, we will have additional functionalities for keeping track of the whole process and for providing information on the checks that need to be performed, well, according to the local regulations. And at the end, uh, we are going to provide at least two different access points. One is for the architect or the project owner for submitting all the necessary details of the project and for doing some pre-checks. And on the other side, we'll have an access point for allowing municipalities or municipality offices to access and review the entire project.
And since everything, including uh, comments and uh, change requests and so on, is shared on the same platform, I think it's uh, safe to assume that at the end, this will result in a really significant improvement in efficiency. Now, from the academic perspective, the University of Minho is currently collecting and um, researching, uh, researching on existing regulations and is trying to collect all this information in uh, Italy and I think also in Czech Republic. And the actual challenge is to come up with something uh, or to, to come up with a format that contains all the information that we need and um, also, yeah, um, it's currently it's not an easy task because all of uh, what, what you need, because first of all, what you need is to translate everything um, then you need to find matching paragraphs or rules and finally you need to describe everything in a way that can be used as input for an algorithm. This can be a simple mathematical equation or geometrical relationship um, based on the building footprints or maybe also the 3D model. For example, there's a Portuguese article uh, that says the, the building should have a maximum this year, a maximum height, a maximum height of two floors and a maximum height of uh, 6.5 meters, except duly justified technical installations. And this information now must be put in a machine readable format. And we did some experiments with a visual editor called Blockly uh, that you can see here. And it's quite promising because it's uh, easy to use interface with uh, check and drop features. And so, but why is this important? Because we will not be able to cover all the regulations in our glossary. Therefore, the municipalities must have a way to extend the glossary by their own regulations. Now, it's a bit difficult to come up with the conclusions because, as I said, it's still work in progress. Uh, but what I could say is that uh, digitization of document management should be enforced. Otherwise, it would be really inconvenient to work with uh, paperwork. Uh, then switching from an experience-based approach to a model-driven approach is not easy. And uh, at the end, whether the entire workflow can be fully automated or whether there will be still some need for manual work, and that remains to be seen. So finally, if you want to know more about the project, uh, you are free to check out our uh, project website. Uh, we are also active on social media like LinkedIn, Twitter, and so on. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, and welcome to our short and crisp presentation of the IECO project, um, Intelligent Empowerment of Construction Industry. As you can already see in our subtitle, we are looking beyond building permits in a more holistic approach to the whole building life cycle. I'm Hannes Heitzhausen, software developer at AEB Software, and this is Christoph Strunadel, uh, deputy CTO of the Software AG. We will split up our presentation into two parts. Um, first, I will uh, provide some general information about the project, and in the second part, um, Christoph Strunadel will dive into the Gaia-X approach. This is not the right one. Just click. Sorry. So, um, our consortium um, consists of about 10 partners from different business segments who contribute their knowledge and technology. 
as you can see, we got different expertises like the construction process with RIB, um, with, uh, with our construction process solutions. Um, we got technology suppliers like the Software AG, which are experts for data integration, um, distributed ledger technology, Gaia X. And okay, let's get this. And we got the expertise in review and approval, which is also AIB and LGA Hof, the Hochschule Hof and the TU Dresden. And last but not least, we got the Hochschule Hof um, as consultants for all legal advice, data governance um, aspects. So as you've already seen, our project is um, divided into work packages. Ah, okay, now. So we got a few work packages, um, of whom a few are more fundamental and more supportive or even prerequisites for the other work packages, like the requirements analysis or implementation of the whole ecosystem. We got the data governance and um, legal aspects, and we got the development of AI algorithms. These work packages support our five pillars of the work packages building, which range from planning up to operation and maintenance. And of course, we got our project management and public relations. Even though it says the building life cycle in the background, we do not cover the deconstruction because there should have been another whole project also supported by the federal ministry that deals with this topic. So to address all the work packages, we um, agreed on six prioritized use cases, which range from the phase of planning, building permitting, over construction up to operation and maintenance, involving different parties from planners up to tenants in the end. All use cases will be services in the same ecosystem. At first, we got the environmental planning service, um, which will be a service that supports architects to comply with guidelines and laws regarding environmental um, concerns. We got the rule checker to check BIM models against catalogs of rules. And we got the digital inspection, um, which is more precisely the um, stability verification. During production or construction, we got the use case automated construction progress report where drones or 3D helmet cameras will report back the status of the construction site and report this directly into BIM models. And we got the asset tracking um, where there will be an app being developed um, to warn users on a construction site about entering danger zones, for example, when a crane is moving or something like this. And last but not least, um, we got our AI-supported operation, um, which will take use of many IoT sensors and will provide uh, information for lowering the energy consumption of buildings or to um, automatically report defects in a building, for example. So since today we are focused on the building permit process, I just brought this uh, highly uh, simplified representation of the building process. And as you might already assume um, that there are so many parties involved and even more software tools, um, so we got many participants 
much data being shared and we have um, one big problem over here which is uh, holding back the speed in in our case and we identified this <clears throat> being the trust between other participants so i don't really want to share my data because i can't see who is acting with this data, who is taking advantage of my data, do I get paid when I share my data and so on. So trust is the real issue right now in Germany. So the goal of AECO is to uh, demonstrate the possibility to offer and use uh, data sharing services uh, in a really trustful, in a trusted environment, a trusted ecosystem and um, I have to say independent from the goodwill of one of the big five um, so that everyone can benefit from data sharing without losing business secrets or even the whole business model. And how to overcome this lack of trust? Christoph Schrimmadl will tell you our solution in this case is Gaia-X. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, this is actually the project setup as well. So we have uh, domain specialists like Hannes and, and the others. And then we have IT specialists and we sit together literally and physically and work together to make the, uh, what we know workable and to make the unknown workable as well. And the unknown in our case is Gaia-X. Uh, we all know uh, that uh, the aspirations of that uh, pan-European initiative is to provide a uniform European worldwide trust something. And I have an unofficial technical definition. So I'm a techni uh, technical guy from software AG. I need to translate, I need to be able to translate all the, you know, self sovereign, um, data transparent trustworthiness into software technology, which is installed, automated and then calculate the business case back. So, so all the lofty arguments, they, they are all true. My task is to translate them into workable, installable, runnable components. And the first thing I want to share is Gaia-X beyond that. Some call it bullshit, you know, uh, data spaces, it's trustful everywhere. It's the key, this is an unofficial one-liner capturing the technical essence of what Gaia-X really is. We had in a keynote uh, earlier to morn, in the morning, we had already what a data space is kind of, I'm not totally happy with the definition of Ingo, but it was an access layer. Gaia-X is a virtualization layer. And there are two major ingredients for that, without which it won't work. The first one, the easy one, technical standards, W3C, OpenAPR. The most important one, is organizational standards. How do I, how do Hannes, how do Katja get their GAIX certificate? Of course, technically there is a, a two-dimensional barcode sometimes in a wallet. Or how, do a how does a company get an identity? I mean, do I have, the CEO is carrying a wallet. There are tools how to solve that, but the process behind that, how do you really obtain? Otherwise, I would go apply for a software AG um, certificate and then spend a lot of money, which uh, software AG then has to pay. So the organizational processes plus the technical standards, for organizational standards I have written, these are the two most important ingredients. And uh, they follow certain rules, those standards. Virtualization layer, that's, uh, that's for technical nerds. This is basically what Gaia-X really is from a technical perspective. I warn you, this is unofficial. If you ask Pierre Grandier from uh, the CTO of Gaia-X, he will not support that officially, but technically I bet I go to war with you if you fight that uh, definition and I'm happy to come up with a compromise, of course. Hybrid, you can read all that uh, for time reasons. One very important thing is, you probably all know and remember that Gaia-X did not and never wants to be also in the future to develop a single hyperscaler. We don't want to do that or Gaia-X doesn't want to do that. The alternative 
However, to get scale is to allow meshing or service orchestration, linking of different services. And the service concept, of course, is extremely um, potent and transcend. It goes completely beyond data spaces. I don't know why the European Union is so focused or limits itself to data. It's service behind the data. So, and there is self-sovereign at the end. I will show you today how software components really realize self-sovereignty and what does it really mean. And that's very easy. Actually, I need only this slide to tell you. There are, seven, there are two important roles, actually three important roles in GAIA-X. One is, I was talking about services. You have service providers, obviously, and service consumers. These are the two guys, the two entities who exchange value or who want to create value by exchanging services. In order to make that work, they need a little bit of governance, a center of gravity, a steward, the guy, the person, the entity who is giving out identities, for instance, and that's called the federator. And uh, we need a little bit of, at, at this point in time, Gaia X magic. Later on, the European Union, some trust anchors will take uh, over of, uh, of, of the Gaia X magic component uh, right now. First thing every entity needs in Gaia X is an identity itself. It's called uh, self-description, in that case, organizational self-description. The term actually will change at, in the second half of the year, but the meaning will stay uh, the same. And highly important, you need to be able to store that credential. If I, it's like Bitcoin. If I have the credential of your company, I am you. I can impose, I, I'm legitimately uh, identifying myself as you. So this. OCM component, Organizational Credential Manager, is kind of a key store for that credential. And uh, uh, we also know from several keynotes and also by subscribing to the FAIR principles that the services, the data, the things which are offered and exchanged in a GAIX ecosystem, you need to somehow be able to find them. And this is a catalog and a portal for some administrative stuff. How how to become a member in the construction ecosystem. The GAIX magic is uh, mostly a list of uh, entities you really trust, like your city council, like your Staatsdruckerei, Bundesdruckerei, for, maybe you don't trust it so much in Germany, um, but uh, you, you have some entities which you really trust and they sign, uh, they make sure that uh, the uh, electronic legitimation GAIX uses um, are working. The all, I, I told you um, already that all the organizations, also the service providers and the consumer need an organizational identity. But what else? The key value exchange in GAIAX is when a service provider uh, is being called by a service consumer, or I formulated active, the service consumer application, could be a browser, calls an API endpoint somewhere else at the service provider. What does the, pro, the, the consumer need in order to be able to do that? We're talking about IT, we're talking about software. So it's not just, oh, you type in an URL and, and do something and read its programs. So we need to have um, a way of automating service requests and for being able to do so, you not only need the identity of the service provider, but also a kind of identity, a description of the service you want to call, which is also called the service self-description GAIX or a service um, uh, a certificate, um, a credential later on. You know Open API probably, Open API 3.0, the, the new swagger for defining that. This service description for services will be on top of Open API, mediating the trust. Um, and linking that uh, to the uh, trust layer of uh, GAIA-X. But in many cases, that will not be enough because uh, you want uh, to authorize people who are able, or programs or systems who are able to execute such a service requests. And for doing that, every person, every entity, every computer system will need a separate 
identification, a separate identity for being able to do so. And this identity is typically stored in a personal credential manager. And this is the wallet, you know, from um, your uh, iPhone. For programs, it would be a, a programmatic uh, key store. But you need that. And every organization will only get the organizational self-description from GAIA-X. And it's up to the organization itself how the, the RIP software gets one identity, and it's up to the RIP colleagues um, how they get out, how they define individual employee credentials. But every single credential can be traced back to an official GAIA-X identity, and thereby it gains, it extends the chain of trust. This is already self-sovereignty um, because we do not force any identity scheme uh, on the individual companies. What do I need further? There are only a few components missing. All, every single discussion on GAIA-X is missing the most important component at the service provider side, namely a kind of an application firewall, which is called since 2011 API Gateway, and all the GAIA-X shenanigans should go in there, like the data space connector or something like that. That should all be in an API Gateway. It's never ever considered in any architecture I've seen. It's vitally important. It comes from the API economy. I wonder why no one has uh, uh, been missing that. I, we definitely. Uh, will implement that. And behind that, this is where your self-sovereignty, the self-sovereignty of the data providers, of the service providers, is implemented and executed in a single component. We call that this unofficial policy agent. You need to have such a logical function somewhere as a service provider, because this is the exact location technically where your access and usage rules are decided and enforced. If you don't have that, you, you're not self-sovereign, but you just are an FTP server and whatever I, I request from you, you, you will give away. And this is where the rules uh, converge. There is uh, currently a debate uh, and a very unfortunate debate in GAIA-X uh, what standard we are going to use. The very unfortunate decision has been to use uh, open digital rights language for policies. Maybe afterwards, yeah. Rego would be better, yeah. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. And that is technically the most complex part for the service provider and unfortunately not solved with the GAIX Federation Services DE right now. The GAIA-X identity concept is in general, at this point in time, maybe not in 10 years, today it's incompatible with most of the other Microsoft, LDAP, OpenID Connect, uh, OAuth 2, internal authentication systems, IAM systems of your company. And this authentication and authorization component translates the GAIA-X credentials, GAIA-X usage access rules to your internal workings and back again. That's the most complex piece of software and honestly, it, uh, I'm politically correct here, it needs a lot of hacking, of dirty hacking, if it ever works. So this is, I mean, we are a research project, so I'm fine with that. But if you want to provide like a, a low threshold access for everyone, we need to improve. Yeah, there are a few more technical uh, things uh, to consider. You will find something like that in the next uh, GAIA-X uh, architecture um, um, document. Uh, we, we have succeeded to, to put that as an outcome of IECO into the architecture document. I'm in the working group uh, there. If you want to be the federator, I was concentrating on provider and consumer because these are the most important roles and many of the companies here only need to take care about that. If you want to be, you know, the trust anchor or doing a little bit more, being more responsible for your ecosystems, it will get a little bit complicated, uh, sorry, with more services and they don't work right now. But don't ask the GXFS guy, Andreas Weiss, he will, the problem is, at the surface value, 
everything runs in certain demo environments at, at sandboxes. But if you want, if you as an IECO project, if we take that and deploy it to our infrastructure, it simply wouldn't even install. So there is still something to do. I wish we were a little bit farther ahead, but all of these problems can be easily overcome. And then the virtualization layer will be complete. So no one will talk about how can I trustfully share with over Ursel and this is that platform and what about Schadwerk in Leipzig and I have this electrician and 60% uh, 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 or 80% of the, uh, the professions at the construction site are small sized enterprises. They will simply go to the portal and get the wallet with their ID. We will be there in two years and IECO is happy to contribute to that. Thanks. Um, so the audience first. So are there any questions in the audience to all the three presenters? So I can start with some questions to the three uh, presenters. So you presented some maybe different approaches. Do you think they are complementary or alternative to each other? Yeah, the question was whether the, the approaches were compatible. And I think partly uh, that, that the first two projects, but I'm open to debate and I'm formulating a little bit harsher, uh, more pointed uh, than I actually mean that. I think many, or at least the two projects and also many other projects I've seen, they simply focus on a platform in the sense that you have one platform owner, that it's one cloud installation and someone is responsible for that. And, and, and that's it. And people have to agree on that man in the middle or that trusted platform provider for doing everything. Uh, I'm simplifying a little bit. This is not the case in IECO. You do not have a single platform. You do not have uh, every every community is, uh, may have a different uh, way how to, to how to handle their requests. Even though the access mechanisms, this virtu virtuality layer of identity and trust is always the same, but within the services, you are completely free to use anything. Many of the approaches believe or, or build a central thing. A, cent a central contraption. You have to agree on all the individual standards. Um, I echo, uh, we don't believe that there will be a single digital twin ever in no data space. There will be many, many different decentralized, in even incompatible digital twins. So you cannot standardize. If you standardize too deep, too, it, it will never work. You will never ever get agreement by all the stakeholders. So the key question is how, at which level do you standardize and where do you accept heterogeneity? So that's the, the only difference is some uh, con projects uh, go for a platform in the technical sense. So it's like, it's not like AWS because it's a European platform, but it's a platform. And IECO does not. I, I don't, please. Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, just, I noticed the microservices, of course, which is a, a very uh, uh, recommended, work, but I was not aware that it was uh, decentralized by nature. Okay, thanks for your clarification. On the other hand, we have actually another point, and we discussions with people who see Unfortunate features possibly play a role in one of the use cases in the child's case. So, we've 
Poland had the offer of a new several times. Mm -hmm. So the question is rather how could we play a play on how could we integrate other systems <laughs> have a solution and now look at a uh, expert guy here on the floor. We've got the yeah. On the one hand, we have, let's say, uh, maybe some technical developments to be used for one kind of project, right? And we're searching for alignment on the European level, especially within the system project. But on the other hand, we could also deal with kind of, okay, and here's a service developer who can basically guide us to doing that project. Could we, could we extend, could we reuse that for this and that purpose later on to go and develop this same thing anew? So I guess uh, this is kind of a very yeah, interesting aspect we could try to discuss and hopefully, yeah, hopefully do something. I'm totally sure. Thank you. Um, what about that? I want to say something. You have to go from here to now. Maybe what I can say is that uh, we are following. We are not following. But what we are doing in the project is really hands down approach because we use software companies on the world that we need to have solutions and we just have to deal with that. And we need to find ways how can all this system communicate. Our uh, protocols need to be implemented or used, and uh, we are familiar with the geospatial systems. So we know, so we know what existing standards are available and how enforced on the European level. And we always say, okay, please, if you want to accept the data or geospatial data, use one of the services that. Are just to take it inside. Yeah. Try to have Ah. Magic. <laughs> we we sell you the route. Yeah, that's for the second example. So I guess was looking for this integration. That's the way you do that. Yeah, so that could be one of the one of the answers. And I wonder because you mentioned you still like this API data. So, uh, so I'm just saying that all this 
Yeah, every one of us, uh, I think, knows that uh, corporate, you cannot simply enter corporate intranets, the internal networks of organizations from the outside. You have a firewall, typically, which prevents uh, requests from the outside of going to the inside, uh, totally, in many cases. So, but if, what, what are you going to do if you want to allow a little bit of access for those services, for those APIs you really want to expose because you are a service provider, a data provider. And whereas a firewall is a very generic, uh, indiscriminatory um, uh, piece of software, which is re um, uh, disallowing almost every traffic, an API gateway is kind of an application level firewall where you configure that certain requests, if they are well formed, if they are not part of a denial of service attack, if they have valid credentials, for instance, an application level gateway in the demilitarized zone, beneath you have the firewall, underneath you have the application, the API gateway, and only then you allow a connection to the real piece of software, to the software component which actually renders, which actually computes the outcome of the service requests. And every company does that. And if you do not have that uh, by yourself, you would rent it. You would go to your API gateway provider, to your Hetzner, whatever. They all have that. Amazon's have that. You buy that from your favorite cloud infrastructure provider if you do not want to operate it yourself. But it's application level security gateway if you want. And our bet for GAIAX is that all the GAIAX credential stuff goes into that single component so that you have a appliance. If you are an electrician with only five people, you can buy Gaia X in a box or Hetzner or whatever, whoever. They can install it, um, World for You in Austria, they can install that in their API gateways. That's kind of the, the future. <laughs> Uh, if the world is more or less the way it goes, there are some iterations that can come. And uh, my question is how do we uh, you know, business side of the operations? I mean, uh, that's not only for us, logging and uh, building and uh, Reconciliation, so all the items that are not for money, etc. Yeah. Should, uh, should work here. And I wonder if that you can do some other exercise if this will continue to be the same situation. Or if we have a whole lot of agreements between the components that they will operate together. Shall I? Oh, uh, oh, uh, anyone else can also answer if, if you have insight. I mean, I, I don't want to. Go okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are there is a certain a small set of core services that Federate or DIAX, uh, um, DIAX Digital Clearing Hub, uh, how is it called, uh, since a couple of months, uh, which will provide it's the portal, how, how to become a member at all, and the catalog for the services and a few identity services. So this, this is the minimum set of core services someone has to provide and that entity needs money. Currently, it's totally unknown who is going to finance that entity. Mm -hmm. Currently, all the data spaces I know, which are um, um, operational, that's only two, mobility data space and Catena X to a certain extent. And if someone can hear that, I do not count projects I need, I want, need, uh, I, I, I really operational, but there is no project behind with a standing organization. They are subsidized by state agencies. And that's the question whether that's sustainable in the future. You will need uh, participation fees, uh, transaction fees, and all the value add services like logging, data notarization scheme. In the true ecosystems, you will have players. Who, who are trusted, like TÜV Süd, Rheinland, TÜV Rheinland Pfalz, or whatever, how they are called, and you have to pay for those services. Otherwise, it's not sustainable. 
if no if, if, if there is no money the data economy will not flourish you wanted to say so we do something to the permits and about markets that provide information data and in the end why don't we integrate the results into the existing digital city? So this is kind of what I'm asking. It's a separate process. So information is flowing to capitals, data on cities, and You mean GAIX uh, being an overhead? The virtualization, the identity? Uh, no, the, 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 there are the tools which would help infrastructure as a service providers uh, to make use for, uh, uh, of GAIX uh, concepts. Uh, but GAIX does not limit itself to infrastructure as a service. You can do platform as a service, as Katja uh, has indicated, any type of service a business would be accessible through GAIA-X mechanisms. But the, the cloud providers, the infrastructure as a service providers have some interest the European because they are too small. So they are working on ways how to get federation running. And federation means that you are doing one thing at several different uh, locations, kind of meshing together resources. So they are working together to define a few substandards within GAIA-X uh, to be able to do that. But uh, it's not necessary. My personal view is it's a good deal to use the main tools and the kind that they can project on national level. The groundbreaking is also new, particularly for the development of the project. So, what? First results are. There are 10 other Lighthouse projects, so uh, we are not alone. So, uh, <laughs> that brings me to the next question because uh, uh, project is a international project. I think for this more general part, I understand, or it's also international. It's totally German, okay. and please don't tell anyone that I'm from Austria. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, 
Yeah, the, um, the, the, within GAIT, uh, uh, this uh, GAIT Federation Services project tries to, and actually has succeeded to a certain extent, to develop open source software components. All these elements, OCM, PCM, all those acronyms, uh, there is uh, kind of an alpha, beta, minus, minus version of software available today, which has been developed in open source. And uh, Germany was very thorough, they're implementing everything. Uh, they were also much earlier than the French because the French couldn't uh, agree on who's funding that, uh, uh, despite being very vocal on everything and very loud. And now they are only focusing on a catalog. So I, I don't know why they do not want uh, to invest uh, their money and time in, in, in the authentication algorithm, which is much more complicated. They only focus on a new French uh, catalog. That's political, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 there's no need to agree on a catalog. As long as you agree on what, uh, what, what goes into the catalog, so the service description language, that's the technical standard. Whoever wants to implement that can implement it. Yeah. It's like um, LDAP protocol, yeah. You don't have to go to, to your favorite software. You can develop your own. own, own. Okay, so I think we reached the time. Thank you very much for your for the presentation. And